Yo, I just got the new thing for the summer. Now I need me a boo thing for the summer. We can kick it like Lou King for the summer. You can't tie me up, though. What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Mad Bebo TV. Today I got a special co host, Mr. Jason Boggs. What's up, everybody? It's only right that I be here um, on the Mad Bebo podcast. We got a special guest in the house tonight, so they have, we had to break out all the big guns, all the big stuff for this guy, so it's only right that I came to check this one out. I know the kid for a long time, so I'm more than happy to be here and be a part of this with my man, Jules. Yes, sir. Who we got tonight, Jules? Tell, tell the people who we got tonight. Today, tonight, we got Allentown's own, Mr. B.I. Valley, Mr. Tyrese Martin, man. How you doing, bro? Yo, I just got the new thing for the summer. Now I need me a boo thing for the summer. We can kick it like Lou Kane for the summer. You can't tie me up though. And I don't even tie shoestrings for the summer. I just let them hang like a new chain for the summer. Speaking of, I double the cube bangs for the summer. Black girlfriend, like, really? Two chains for the summer. But I done blue chains on a few things that was dumber. That's why it's cash rules like Wu Tang for the summer. With that said, I might cop two things for the summer. They both gonna be blacker than Lou Dang for the summer. And then I'm nicknaming them Hussein and Osama. That's a Saudi and an Afghan. New slang for the summer. That's the Audi and the ass dance, new names for the summer Whoa. Cup in my hand, it's Duce for the summer A hey, night, a dark night, I'm Bruce Wayne for the summer Love, summertime shootouts, the Wild West uh. Brand new kicks and white tees, my style fresh uh. Talking fly to every shorty walking by, she could get it. get it For the summer, but at least give me a weekend with it yeah. Summertime shootouts, the Wild West Give it up like a gun press to your sundress uh. uh. Running game like a summer tournament Smoke some, sip some with a player on the bench Love it's all or nothing for the summer. Just copping, we ain't cuffing for the summer. Playlist popping, let it shuffle for the summer. So good, working, chilling, get back to it. Yeah. Quarantine been killing you, huh? Yeah, you know what I mean, Yeah, I'm saying, though, you see me, I'm looking all rough for quarantine life, you know what I'm saying? I apologize to the people. But you look pretty fresh for the quarantine life, man. I mean, I see the waves are still in there. Like how, yo, how you got ways in the middle of a quarantine, dog? What, what, what's up with that? No social distancing? Nah, uh, my barber acting right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need his number yeah. ASAP. Yeah, man. Yeah, can, can he do a Zoom haircut? I, I do that. How does that work? Like, can we do a nah, Zoom cut? Nah, there's people on, on, on social media cutting their own hair. I won't take that this one. Nah, you know what Reese ain't going to take it. He got the lineup and everything. I know that that was professionally done right there, dog. Yeah. So, uh... So besides getting your hair cut during the quarantine, man, tell us how much you're missing the game that we all love, man. How much you miss the hoops right now? Well, like, make this little virus thing, like, make me appreciate the game so much more. Like, not to no days for granted. That's probably one thing I'm going to this virus, bro. All right. All right. Every day is a day to get better. Um, what are you doing, though, like, to try to keep yourself, I mean, push-ups, sit-ups? You doing anything whatsoever, running around the block? What you trying to do to keep yourself in some type of shape? Uh, yeah, still like the regular house workouts, like push ups, all that, blah, blah, and like school work, work in. Got you. Now, as you talk about work, um, tell me about your development coming up. Let's go back to where this all started, man, before Tyrese Martin was a household name or, or well on his way to being a household name. Let's talk about your beginning and starting, starting out. What was you doing in, let's say, like seventh, eighth grade? When did you think, you know, this basketball state was going to be something that you wanted to do at this level? That young, like, I was just playing to play. Like I didn't really have like a goal. I was just playing to like keep me busy. Whatever, go to school. I didn't play varsity. I played two P. Then freshman, I played freshman. But I was like going in tenth grade is when I started taking it serious. So then I started locking in more, setting goals to myself. And I feel like that helped me get to where I'm at today. I also helped you grew like five inches from your freshman to sophomore year too, didn't you? I did. <laughs> That's how you go from freshman to varsity real quick. Um, so when, when you start off, you know, you start off young. I know I remember I see you playing East Side, a little uh, East Side Elite, then, final, then Team Final Red. Then you make the move to We Are One. Talk about that transition as you just went up the ladder on that. How, how was that for you? Uh, the transition was definitely different between the levels of competition I played. Like, but I feel like it just tested me and tested my skill set. And it just showed me, like, different things what I had to work on. Right. So now you come up through that. You get into your high school stuff. 
Yeah, um, just just talk about your senior year and kind of like how y'all, you know what I'm saying, y'all kind of see on your back. So just kind of talk about that, like kind of relive the, like, the senior year. <laughs> senior year, it was lit. That was one of the best years of high school that I probably had or spring. Like, I'm going to remember that year for a long time, especially the basketball perspective of it. Just trying to catch the party, flip it like a special shorty. Got bands matching Cardi, strippers like the bachelor parties. I'm a butt smacker when I'm off the nutcracker. Barry Sanders on hold, tell of a cut back up. Swoop back up, too much act up. Ain't no cash behind you, I got too much back up. I mean, paper keep coming, can't do nothing but stack it. Swag too crazy, can't do nothing but jack it. My studio's a padded room, I'm flowing like I had a shroom. Should've dropped this for the summer, like the sun I had in June. Love. Summertime shootouts, the Wild West. Brand new kicks and white. Tease my style fresh. Uh, talking fly to every shorty walking by, she could get it. get it for the summer, but at least give me a weekend with it. Yeah. Summertime shootouts, the Wild West. Give it up like a gun press to your sundress. Uh, running game like the summer tournament. Smoke some, sip some with a player on the bench. Love. Love. Like, we was ranked number one in the state for our class for the majority of the year. We didn't lose to our last senior night game of the season. Took our first loss. And then, but it's just, history speaks for itself for what we've done. We sold out games, had games moved to PPL Center, sold that out. Let's talk about that PPL announcement so tonight. You guys are in the house, 8,000 people come in the building, sold out, eight, 9,000 people in there. You guys are playing perennial power parkland. <laughs> and you guys are in control of the game. And then tell me, tell me, tell me how that played out for you. Well, walking into that game, like warm up lines and like seeing like all the seats packed, different things like that, it was it was like definitely brought nerves to the body or whatever. But it was like something like a regular game. Like, I just know I had to play my regular game, and we started off good. Then late in the game, you know, fourth quarter, I let it speak for itself. Whatever happened, happened. We lost. We went about our day. Oriole. Sam Oriole happened that fourth quarter. Let's talk about that. Sam did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's what's up. Shout out to Sam. That was a great game. You guys, um, I think the beauty of that was that you guys uh, pushed each other to be better and that uh, the city probably doesn't come out like that if it isn't Allen and Parkland. So that was great to have, you know. Y'all had, uh, had the alumni wearing the jersey and everything, so that was cool to see. Like, there's a whole <laughs> section of everybody that played there. They had the jerseys on. It was cool. Y'all had the whole city out there. It was, it was, a, great, it was a great moment. Um, talk about that a little bit though, because that's one thing special thing about Allen is that there is a uh, a legacy there. And like the guys, the older guys come back, they show love, they root for you guys. I'm sure you're I'm sure you're playing it for it. Um I've seen you've been by the school a little bit since you've been gone and you talked to some of the guys that's come after you already. Talking about William Allen and Coach Snyder. Um he retired this year. So talk to let's talk to us about the great Coach Snyder, what he did for you and, and the culture that was set over at Allen. And it's definitely a legacy left at Allen, but um, Coach Snyder, like, he left, like, he took a big role in my basketball journey and where I'm at. Like, he's the one that, like, sat me down going into 10th grade and, like, told me, like, I could take this serious. Like, he put the vision in me that I didn't see in myself. And so, like, I give him a lot of credit for that. But, like, um, the legacy part of Allen, like, everybody just comes back. I feel like most – everybody just played under the same coach. So, they just – they feel like that connection is still there. But him being gone, I don't think it's going to change whether – the community or former players come back and show love and support to. Um, like, what was, like, kind of elaborate what you said, like, like, what were the kind of, like, guidance and tips he gave you, like, during your time there? Because, you know, he he's a legend in Allentown. You know, he got inducted to, like, the Hall of Fame or whatever. So just share with us some of the things he taught you over the years. Well, in ninth grade, like, I wasn't the kid that I was that I am now. Like, ninth grade, after basketball season, like, I wouldn't go to school anymore. I stopped doing my work. I would just be in the hallways, won't go to class. And, like, he told me, like, I could either be a basketball player or, like, a class clown. So then he told me if I wanted to be a basketball player, he would do anything to help me, put resources-wise, to help me be that player. Or if I want to be a class clown, you just have to let me be a class clown and see what that takes me. So now you move on from high school, you do a prep year. Um, I know that was a little controversial. I guess people, you know, you had Division One offers at that time. And then, you know, then you decided to still do a prep year. 
to, uh, take us there. To talk to us about that decision, going to Master Tutton, um, how that played out for you. Well, um, I didn't want to have, like, the regular story as a freshman on the basketball team on a college campus where, like, he plays a little bit of minutes and it's just always because he was a freshman. Like, I wanted to be have an impact as soon as I get on the campus. And I felt like one of the things I lacked going into college was strength. So I feel like me going to match nine to get stronger for a year and then still work on my game and take college classes, like, that was a plus for me. So then when I got to University of Rhode Island, like, I was already ready. No, I agree. I definitely uh, – I think you put the world on notice that probably was the right decision for you. Um, you go head-to-head -head back in your hometown or home area at Parkland, ironically enough, and you face off against uh, now current NBA star Cam Reddish, and you go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. What was that like going with going against Killer Cam? Oh, that was definitely fun. That was probably one of the highlight games of my basketball journey since I've been playing. But – um. <laughs> No, nah, that game was it was different. Like I knew I had to well all the people that was there, like I knew I couldn't do nothing less but show up and show out for to like for like that's all that was. All right. Did, did you feel like you made a statement with that? Cause you know you because you had the hometown, you you had the whole town back, you know what I'm saying? Cause that was kind of like your return. Cause you didn't you didn't come back since I don't know. So was that like a saving game for you? Yeah, I feel like it was more of a game to, like, let people know, like, I've been working, things like that. Like, because definitely people haven't seen me play since February in Allentown. So, I think almost being a whole year, seeing me perform like that against top-level talent, like, definitely won't keep up. Um, now, now you go ahead. You did your year at Tut. You had a, a crazy statement game like that. You got a lot of confidence. And then you go ahead, let's talk about your arrival on campus at Rhode Island. I'm uh, going there with Coach Cox, I believe, correct? Uh, and so let's talk about yeah, your freshman year over at Rhode Island, how that transition was coming from, you know, prep school. Now, now, you're, now you're on the big stage, Division One college basketball. Um, it was definitely different. I feel like high school prep, like AAU, I just always – one of the things that I struggled with, I just always played at my own pace. Sometimes it could benefit or kill me. But it definitely killed me when I got to college because, like, my first game, but I had to adjust to the game speed. And, like, my first shot, like, my first college shot was a three-pointer, and it got blocked. So then that was when they sat me down and told me, like, look, like, it's not high school no more. Like, you got to speed things up and, like, work on your game and get with it. So, like, that was – it was, like, a hard process the first couple of games. But then once I got adjusted to the game of speed, then I feel like everything just fell in place. Uh, talk about playing with uh, Fats, Fats Russell. How was he playing with him? Um, it was fun playing with him. He's an exciting guard. He definitely has a lot of passion on the defensive end and all that. So, like, that leads out to a lot of your offense transition fast breaks we had. So, it was real fun playing with him. That's my guy. So, now you do two years over at Rhode Island. You're having a lot of success. I mean, you're breaking out. You know, I'm seeing CBS Sports. They're saying you're the guy. You know, if you step up, you could take him to another level. Seems like, you know, everything's coming together for you. And then, then we get the news that you're leaving, you're transferring to UConn. What, what, uh, what goes into that thought process of moving to UConn? And, uh, you know, what was, what was it like having to leave Rhode Island, a place where you're having a success at? I mean, it was definitely hard to leave on my part, but I felt like it was for the better. I mean, it was definitely heartbreaking for a lot of people. It even hurt me a little bit, even though know, I had to leave some of the relationships that I had with the people over there. But I feel like I had to leave to better myself. I feel like, what I have to do, have an impact on the bigger thing, will help me get there. I feel like you kind of have everything in his hands for me, like to help me get to the next level. Got you. What, why, why UConn specifically? I know when you first made the announcement, announcement, I seen things coming across the board, Twitter and things. You had a, you know, a lot of schools, powerhouses, Oregon, SEC, Big Ten. You know, you had a lot of places, <clears throat> schools that were reaching out. Why UConn in particular? Um, UConn, I feel like, because growing up. The Big East was always a conference that, like, I wanted to play in, play in matches for a garden. Like, that's a dream. And then with that, I mean, Coach Hurley had a relationship with him when he was recruiting me at Rhode Island. So that was a plus, too. And they just have a whole lot of different resources compared to Rhode Island that, like, made them an elite program compared to a great program at Rhode Island. So um, Big East obviously has a pretty, like, storied history. Like, did you take that chance because um, – 
you think it's going to give you more exposure and you kind of wanted to prove yourself on that kind of stage and platform? Well, I mean, yeah, but the Atlantic 10, they get the national TV games that Big East gets, Big East will get more though. But I feel like just like the competition level, like that's, I feel like that stuff goes into factor when being looked at by scouts and stuff, like the competition you're playing against daily goes into, plays a big factor. And I didn't want that to be one of my factors while staying at Rhode Island. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. So now, you know, you, you're getting ready to come in to, uh, to UConn. Congratulations on that. Um, you're well on your way, if not, you know, to being a household name. Um, so we went through your whole journey. And uh, we see how you, you know, kind of grown and, and gotten to these points and taking things seriously. But was there ever any point, like, when you started to take it seriously and you were like, ah, this is getting hard, maybe this isn't. We know, was there ever any self-doubt? Because it seems like you bet on yourself a lot in this journey. Like, you continuously to double down on yourself and believe in yourself. Where does that self-belief come from, and was there ever any moments of self-doubt? Well, it was definitely self-doubt and workouts, even after bad games, but I felt like if having a bad workout or a bad game, it's not the end of your basketball career. And like, the worst of it is not being on the place you love again. I feel like I just had to take that journey get better the next day, next workout, next game. Just pull myself and just motivate myself every day. Do you, do you have, like, advice for the people that, um, you know, like, people doubt them or they count them out? Like, you have any advice for those people? I mean, me, it was just, it was just look at it as all opinions. Like, as long as you, you let the opinion, like, your own belief, then really, you ain't not doing the right thing. So as long as you believe in yourself, you could control where you go. They, their, their opinions can't. Well, how do you balance that? I think that's a very good point that you make. You definitely got to have belief in yourself. But then how do you, you know, when the good moments and you're having these games, you got, you know, national pundits, you know, some of the greats and legends of the game missing your name and saying, hey, this guy has a chance to be special. How do you balance, you know, confidence where it's not, hey, not getting too big, feeling like maybe I've arrived already. You know, you still have a lot of work to do. How do you balance it? Well, me, for instance, I just always got the bad games and the bad workouts always in mind after a good one. Like, sometimes I like telling myself, like, yeah, you, I know you remember that bad game. Like, you're really not that good. So, like, that helps level-headed. Nah, that's, de that's definitely dope. Yeah. Well, well um, no, nah, I think that was, that was a really good advice for the young kids watching. I think they need to uh, pay attention to that. I think a lot of, a lot of times it is mixtape highlights and all this. You know, a kid gets a mixtape and they're ready to go to the league and they're in seventh grade. So I think that's a good advice for the kids. Oh yeah, one more thing about like going off his point, like, like you know, most of these kids like, you know, think they all think when they're younger, like, you know, I'm going to go Division One, play Division One basketball. Like, like you kind of explain like the work, like, it, like really requires to you know play at the Division One level since it's the highest level of basketball. Yeah, it definitely takes a lot of work, but I mean, I just want to. End of the day, you just want to have the exposure and make sure you just outwork the next person in front of you. You can just sit back, think you take days off. That's just days people are getting better. So the amount of work you got put in is definitely hard. But once you get the exposure to go with it, it just makes it a little bit easier. Gotcha. Well, we're gonna have, go ahead and wrap it up. I know you gotta probably go home and put your do rag on and uh, and keep those three sixties working. So we don't want to hold you up any longer and you know deny your prettiness. But I'd like to thank you for sitting down with us. Um, it was dope chopping it up with you, catching up with you. Much uh, congratulations on the decision. Um, much much wish future success at UConn. Um, and good luck up there with Coach Hurley. And hopefully, you know, maybe you guys can cut down some nets in a couple of years. Said you proud of you, bro. Keep pulling off, bro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we out. That was Tyrese Martin.